tonight's a big night for you. You are uh, joining the digital age, and you are uh, starting your own. I don't know what you would. I mean, it's not a network. It's LevinTV.com, and it's um, you'll be able to watch your show live, your television show that is happening at 9 p.m. Eastern every night. You can watch it live on Levin TV. Yeah, I want to thank you. Uh, how selfless you've been in mentioning this. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's not a network. It's me doing a 40, 50, you know, hour, hour and a half, whatever we choose, a program five nights a week. It'll be after my radio show. and People can get it on uh, their laptop or their home commuter, iPhone, iPad, Android phone, tablet, Amazon Fire tablet, Amazon Fire TV, Roku. As you know, we're trying to use all these new platforms. Hmm. And one of the reasons is I don't think I fit on cable or network and satellite. I think the feeling's probably mutual, by the way. <laughs> and and really, I don't want somebody telling me what to say or how to say it or why not why I shouldn't I say it. And so I'm just and I'm really tired. Uh, again, I'm, this isn't aimed at anyone or anything. Um, I I can't watch these Congo line of guests yelling at each other anymore. I just can't do it. So a year and a half ago, I met with some folks in my living room, and I said. Here's my idea. What do you say we do this? I'm not interested in building some massive empire. I just want to get our, our message out, something interesting, compelling, commercial-free. Let's have a really cool, cutting-edge studio that kind of reflects my personality. Let's do absolute best uh, you know, visuals we can with HD and so forth. And it's been a long time in planning, and we're ready to roll tonight. I'm very excited about it. What's, your, what's going to be on your show tonight, Mark? Yeah, well, here's the thing. I'm not going to develop all this first thing in the morning, even though I've talked to these guys already. Obviously, we want to talk about the Reagans. I, I was very close to that administration and worked in his campaign in 76 and 80 and worked in the Reagan administration and with him more than her, but she was absolutely terrific. I'm definitely going to talk about her. I want to bring some history into the program, and I also, of course, want to talk about Saturday, which was actually remarkable. You watch these cable stations, you wouldn't know that Ted Cruz got more delegates than Donald Trump on Saturday. Yep. That's right. That's right. And I was listening as I was in the car to uh, Stu do the rundown. He's exactly right. Louisiana is remarkable. He was way behind, and then the sudden rush. He had a great debate, Cruz. I think it mattered. I think people are, are really starting to digest what's going on. The problem is the RNC has created this truncated process because they were hoping to ram through some rhino. So it makes it a little tougher, but uh, you know these other candidates, Kasich and Rubio, at this point, I don't know what they're holding out for. Maybe they're holding out for the convention process. They're not going to get it at any convention, but they're doing uh, they're doing a lot of damage. And here's the thing: you know this, I know this, our audiences know this. We have been begging for a conservative to step forward. We have been begging to have an opportunity once, just once in our lifetime since Ronald Reagan, to vote for a principled, consistent conservative. And we have that opportunity now. And all these excuses, he looks like this, he can't get elected to that. And so I've heard all this stuff before. Reagan's a B actor, he shoots from the hip, he's not bright. All false. If you're going to be a principled, consistent conservative, not over a period of months, but a period of decades, you're no fool. As you know, you have to really think things through. You've got to be able to reason. You have to be able to argue. You have to be able to explain yourself. Because you're going against the current. You're going against academia and media and all the phony experts. So these men and these women, they're very sharp. They're very intelligent. They know what they're doing. And, you know, Glenn, even more than that, he and conservatives are running for us. They're running for us. We need them to, get to win. We need them to get elected. Anyway, I'm preaching to the choir, but you know the point. No, I, 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 I will tell you, um, uh, Rince Priebus was on uh, yesterday on ABC. <laughs> what? What is it? He Rince. just writes. You just refuse. Right. I do you refuse. Just, refuse. I do refuse. <laughs> I don't mean to. Be uh, no, of course not. No. Or Wait a minute. Like is it Rince Priebus Sr. or Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Rince was, uh, was on ABC yesterday, and... Uh, I'm watching him, and he's, he's delusional. He is as delusional as Kasich and Rubio are, where their campaigns are just about to catch fire. And and he's talking about, you know, hey, well, we'll see what happens on the convention floor. 
Mm. That, that has set the world on fire. If you try to play some game and you're trying to um, uh, keep th the delegates from, from anyone having enough delegates, especially when you have somebody like Cruz who is coming up and you're keeping Kasich and you're keeping Rubio in the game to play some game on the floor of the convention, uh, what, do you think Mitt Romney's going to step in and everybody's going to say, oh, great, well, thank goodness our savior is here? Well, you're exactly right. Now, he set up this process with his slip-and-fall lawyer friend, Ben Ginsburg, and now here we are. And the problem is they front-loaded this process hoping to ram through one of their guys. Now, the truth is they'd like to go to a convention. They'd rather burn the house down than, than give it away. But the other truth is Trump may not get 1,237 delegates. Nobody might get 1,237 delegates. We don't know. And if that happens, it will wind up on the convention floor. And here's what we do know. No conservative will get nominated on that convention floor. Certainly not Ted Cruz. It's like I've heard it said, you know, Ted could, could agree to be uh, on the Supreme Court. You know, some weird analysis like that. But who is going to vote for Ted in the Senate to be on the Supreme Court? Like nobody? Mm. So, I mean, the, the point is... He is positioned as a principled conservative, as principled as you're ever going to get. And I've said many times, if you're 45 years or older or younger, you've never had an opportunity to vote for a conservative for president of the United States. It's invigorating. It's exciting. It's, you know, to become an activist rather than, you know, the better of uh, the worst of two evils or the better of two evils. And so people who are on the sidelines are not sure what to do or they're not sure what Trump is thinking or, or they think Rubio has a shot. Rubio doesn't have a shot. He has a shot maybe at second or third place, but he does not have a shot at first place. He did himself in with the immigration issue. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. And Trump, I think, you know, he's hanging in at 35 percent, 35 percent. So we have this primary system, which is terribly flawed, which, again, unless people wake up, and they are waking up, I think, and get behind the most conservative this, candidate in this race, we're going to lose it. I think this weekend was was a show of that. I mean, if you look at what was projected and the momentum that is now going towards Cruz, and I think people people on the right, I mean, I think there, I've talked to a lot of people who say, I really like Ted Cruz, but he can't win. Marco Rubio is the one that can win. I think Marco Rubio is showing himself as the exact opposite of a winner. And people are starting to now see Cruz and say, you know what, maybe he can win. And I think with what happened over the weekend, it's very clear that he can win if you just get behind him. Uh, and, and I just think the momentum is going there. I, I mean, I, I don't know, Mark. You're, you're smarter at this stuff than I am. How do you see this thing playing out? I don't think any of us are smart enough to figure that out. I, I don't know. I mean, we're heading into some states that are more liberal where the Republicans are more liberal. So it'll be who turns out that matters. And that's an interesting point, too, because uh, Trump keeps saying, look at all the people he's bringing into the Republican Party. The fact is, when you look at Kansas, which had a massive uh, increase in voting, 50% over 2012, Cruz crushed everybody, including Trump. So who brought in who there? I think a lot of people are turning out and voting for the candidates they like. It's not just Trump bringing people into the process. That's number one. Number two, people need to look at the negatives. He's got the highest negatives in the history of recording negatives. Now, that's pretty bad. It's worse than Hillary Clinton. And they show that one-on-one, -on -one, him against Hillary, he does worse than anybody else in the field. This matters. I mean, here, here we have the most conservative candidate since Reagan running for president of the United States, who on head-to-head, -head, it's close, beats Hillary Clinton, and we're told he can't win. Then we have a guy whose positions are, are uh, malleable, and, he, and everybody says he's the only one who can win, and yet when they do the head-on-head, -head, he can't win. So I don't, I don't know what people are thinking, but I agree with you. I think many, many more people are starting to focus in and looked at that last debate and said, you know what, the guy on the stage who's mature, who's trying to handle a very ugly situation up there with all the name-calling and so forth, but he's trying to get his points across, is Cruz. And then you have the homeless guy standing there, Kasich, who's at the end. Hey, you know, can we all get along? Does his Rodney King act all the time? And then he pretends he's an outsider while reminding us he was in Congress for 18 years. I'm going, what is with this guy? I say we name a post office after him. Did you know his dad was a mailman, by the way? <laughs> no, I didn't know. Oh, I think we name a... And he's going to pick that. any post office he wants and ask him to leave. <laughs> Mark Levin, tonight on Levin TV, it begins. I will tell you this. 
uh, not only because I know that Mark is going to deliver an excellent show, and I've seen his set. I mean, th they're doing it right. This is not some little. This is this is not access cable. He's actually doing it right, which is something that people were not thinking about doing, uh, you know, before. He understands that television is changing, and the way to get to people now is just through an app. And uh, and I not only because he's going to deliver a great show, but because I believe we need to support each other, and we need to stand uh, with the people who get it. Uh, and pioneers like uh, Mark need to be supported. And Tanya and I both signed up, and we're both members uh, for Levin TV. And I would suggest that you do the same thing. It's like five bucks a month. LevinTV.com. And join the Blaze. Well, you did Blaze the Trail. We really appreciate it. You got a great team there, and it's. It's a pleasure to know you, Glenn. Thank you very much. Mark. Take care of yourself. Good friend. Thank you, Mark Levin. You're getting to the point now where you really can just do that. You, 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 I mean, you can go and sign up for your four or five favorite things, and the stuff that you're going to watch. You have Levin TV. You got The Blaze. You got a few other things that you like to watch, and you can kind of go that way. Netflix or Netflix, watch TV, yeah. Amazon or whatever, and you're set. The only time I've watched TV in the last cable two years anymore. is just for the election stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the news stuff is on there, sports, if you like that. If there's, I mean, there's still, I mean, there's... A lot of that stuff gets streamed. So, I mean, I've been without the big, big time cable for a few months now, and it's... You've it's survived. Doable. It's you're, doable. You're alive. It's doable. Yeah. So you don't have cable at all. Very difficult. Anymore. I do have basic, basic. I mean, they... Cause that's really weird, because this guy is... No, seriously. Mr. TV. I know, but Mr. I ha TV. there's other ways to view, which I mm -hmm. have. <laughs> so instead of, you know, $300... It would have sounded nefarious just about two years ago. Yeah. And then, there's yeah. other ways to view, and I have. <laughs> it's still nefarious with Jeffy. Let's yeah, with Jeffy, it's it is still like nefarious. I watch it through my neighbor's window. <laughs> yeah. So? <laughs> split the cable from uh, behind I her split, house. Yeah, I split the so cable I give all the behind the fence. <laughs> all right.